down and didn't draw the penalty. Tried to, but Curry Frazier, the referee, not going for it, and the Kings clear it. Now here's Thomas again at the blue line. Sends it down to the King zone. Broken up, but not cleared. In the middle, Kerber shoots and a save off the pad. It's over. Rebound score by Derek King. He picked it right out of midair. And the Islanders lead one to nothing. Rob Stauber had a chance to throw the puck, and he handles the puck very well, but he could not get enough on it to get outside the zone. Tom Kerber's picked it up, and you're right, Bob. Derek King just picked that puck. The puck was in the air. Here's the clearing attempt by Stauber, right up the middle. That's always dangerous, no matter if there's an opening or not. The rebound comes out at the same time as the puck. No, it does not even get to the ice. Derek King picks it right out of the air. We're going to see the whole play again. You can see how the Islanders clogged the middle on the clearing attempt by Rob Stauber. The puck is about a foot off the ice, and King gets a lot on that one. Looks like he hit him with a driver, and the Islanders lead one to nothing. Power play goal by Derek King. King with his fourth, Kerbers with an assist, at 58 seconds. Power play goal for the Islanders. Kings lose it again at the blue line, but offside is Travis Green. Just in a point position, but as always, with everyone knows, with the big body of Eric Lindros, he can be effective. Committed himself to go down and slide, but there was too much room on the near side. Smart play by Pierre Turgeon and a great pass from Derek King. Islanders two for two so far tonight on a power play. They lead two to nothing. 12-16 to go in the first period. And the Kings, reminiscent of what happened in Washington in the third game of the seven-game road trip, having to come from behind. Now we've got a fight going to break out. Warren Reichel and Nick Vakoda. Right out at center ice. Reichel and Vakoda. And Vakoda with a left. And Reichel trying to come back, but they go down to the ice. And the linesmen are going to break them up. 12.09 to go in the first period. 2 nothing, Islanders. To stir his team up, and Warren Reichel tried it right after the drop of the puck after the goal. He picks out the toughest guy on the New York Islanders. It was Mick Bacota, and both guys were not afraid to lean back, dig down deep, and throw punches. Both players, Reichel and Bacota, received five minutes each for fighting. So the Kings are having difficulty lately starting games. They have to try and pick themselves off the mat right here after the Islanders playing a very smart, free-flowing game on the power play with two power play goals. Out. Ron Hextel unhappy with his first. Islanders already with two power play goals tonight, and they've got 3.50 left to go on this four-minute penalty to Daryl Sador. Seven minutes to go in the first period. Three-nothing Islanders. Puck taken at center ice for a moment by Conacher. Then he gets it back again. Here is Blake. To Conacher, back in the King zone to Zidnik. He gives it to Blake, and Blake's pass not clear. Held in by Benoit Hold. Hold to Bollock. Bollock shoots the bucket wide. Rebound behind the net to Ferraro, and a penalty coming up here. Elbowing as Rob Blake knocked Ferraro down. Now the Islanders have a two man advantage. Rob Blake cannot believe it. He's known for his hard hits, and he devastates players when he hits them. And most of the time, they're very clean hits. We'll take a look at Rob Blake. He leaves his feet to make the hit. Now his elbows were tucked inside his body. Elbowing's the call. We'll see if Blake gets the elbows up. Not necessarily. He kind of pushes through with his arms, but he did leave his feet. A lot of times that'll be called charging. So the King's in a deep hole here. They trail 3-0. Now they face a 5-on-3, a two-man disadvantage. Group. Do we group? No. There's a, a good pass to Steve Thomas. Thomas on the right side. His pass into Turgeon. Back to Troop in deep. Can't get a shot. Nice sliding poke check by Mark Hardy. Now Turgeon behind the net. Turgeon checked there. He gets it over to Derek King, which he's played this year. Puck fired all the way behind the net. Kelly Rudy, a former Islander, a fan favorite out here on Long Island, sends it around the board to the left wing side, and Warren Reichel clears it into the Islander zone, and we get a whistle on an icing call against the Kings. The Kings with Reichel, Potvan, and Conacher up front, Huddy and Sador back. So the faceoff back or stopping the Islanders. The Islanders were effective going wide with a puck with speed. They were able to cut back in front. 
and a couple of other times. The it didn't go wrong against the Islanders. They just kept filling the net. Kelly Rudy faced 52 shots at Miami, 39 at Washington, and 41 against the New York Rangers on this road trip alone. Coming into this game tonight, left side, shot from there, deflected off a skate. Now at the blue line, we've got Rich Pilon involved in a scrap. Pilon and Mark Potvan for the Kings, and Potvan pushes Pilon back into the boards. Pilon got the shot that deflected off a skate, and all of a sudden, Mark Potvan goes right after him. And now look out, Ray Scapanello's of the linesman about ready to fall into the bench. So they're trying to break up Mark Potvan and Rich Pilon. 10.06 to go in the second period. Islanders five, Kings nothing. Guys off in the penalty box. Rich Pilon right there. He's joined by Mark Potvin of the Kings. Both players receive five minutes each for fighting. There's Potvin adjusting his helmet. Difficult job for officials, especially linesmen, when you're trying to break up a fight. Ray Scampanetto trying to get into the middle of things. He climbs right into the bench of the New York Islanders. He gets some help from his partner, Dvorsky. And those linesmen have to coordinate that when they're trying to break up a fight. We get another whistle right here in the neutral zone. Looks like a two-line offside against the Kings. The last goal by the Islanders, Huey Krupp with his third of the year from Marty McInnes and Brad Dalgarno at 9.29. And we're just halfway through the game, and the Islanders have a five to nothing lead. The Kings, in their last eight against the Islanders, had won seven and lost one. And the Kings had won four straight here in Long Island. Their last loss in this building was back on January 2nd of 1990. This one isn't over yet, but the Islanders have certainly got a nice cushion. Here's McInnes across the line to Scott LaChance, and coming back to take it away, Warren Reichel. Reichel can't hang on, though. Pass in front by Delgarno, broken up by Sador. He gave it away on the right side to Travis Green. Green's pass taken away by Gretzky. Kings come back to center ice. Gretzky with Reichel. Gretzky across the line to Reichel. Shoots and a save by Hextall. Islanders clear it up towards center ice. Taken away there by Alex Jidnick. Kings have to touch up to get onside. 5-0 in favor of the Islanders. They've outshot the Kings 25-20 for the game. Here's Travis Green for the Islanders. Green across the line. King zone throws it in deep toward Galgarno. He checked into the boards by Blake. Back over to get it on the left side. Kings start back out to center ice now. Here's Dave Tomlinson. Tomlinson, formerly with St. Louis and Boston. He stopped there at the right point. Blake holds it in. Blake into Yari Curry. Curry sends it around the left side toward Tony Granato. He's tied up by Flatley. Tomlinson with it. Flips it back on the right side to Blake in the Islanders zone. Behind the net to Granato in front. Shoots and a save by Hextall. Granato pushes it. Hextall. Puck is taken by Volek. Up to Flatley on the right wing. Flatley with Ferraro across the line to Krupp. Krupp with it. His pass in front, but behind the play, We've got Granado and Kerbers getting into a scrap. Kerbers and Granado way behind the play. That may have been precipitated when I thought Granado ran into Ron Hextall in front of the net. 5 nothing Islanders lead with 8.31 to go here in the second period. The Kings not out of it yet. 8.31 remaining in the second period, and certainly the Kings are not going to let down at this point. Not a player like Tony Granato. Granato went after Tom Kerbers. Granato receives two minutes for high sticking and five minutes for fighting. Tom Kerbers is retaliating through the first punch. So Kerbers will pick up two minutes for instigating, five minutes for fighting. The instigating two minutes carries an automatic game misconduct. The fans here at the Coliseum not happy with the call on the half board. Pierre Turgeon and Steve Thomas. 5-0 Islanders lead. Here's Steve Thomas cutting in, in front. Tried to give it back to Turgeon. Picked up now and a pass to Thomas. He shot it up high over the net. Tipped there by Kelly Rudy. Rudy got his stick on that to deflect it over the net. And here's Turgeon. Turgeon left side on the power play into Derek King. King cut off by Hardy. Back to Turgeon. To Krupp. Now Malikov shooting wide to the right side. Rebound. Diving with Rudy. Couldn't cover it up. Malikov with it. 
or excuse me, Thomas. Now it comes to Turgeon. Now to Steve Thomas. Whips it in front trying to hit Derek King, but right there to break it up. The Kings, Mike Donnelly. Poop with it again for the Islanders. Drives it hard around the boards. Comes over toward Derek King. Back to the blue line. Now right side, Steve Thomas couldn't find it. Then he gets a weak shot. It's taken and driven off the boards and off the noggin of Poop. He's down. Play continues. Here's Brent Thompson. Thompson's pass tipped it by King and a save by Hextall. And the whistle blows as Huey Kroop is down on the ice. He's been cut by the puck as the Kings tried to clear it. The fans wanted the whistle to blow earlier. And the referee and the linesman look over there to determine how seriously a player is injured. The Kings had control of the puck. And they didn't blow the play down right away. And the fans are upset over that. Dewey Cook just trying to keep the puck in here. He'll wave at it with his hand. Mark Hardy, smart play, get the puck high when trying to clear while penalty killing. Watch Coop. He swings at it with his right hand, but he misses it. The puck was twirling end over end, and Krupp goes down immediately, and he is cut and cut bad. The play did not stop until the attack was foiled at the other end. Another look at it. Defenseman can keep a power play alive trying this. Rob Blake of the Kings is very effective. They seem to find ways to keep the puck in, but right there, tough play. By Uwe Koop, he goes down to both knees. He's back on his feet right now. Skating off under his own power. Certainly with all the blood, it looks very dangerous. But with Koop being able to skate off by himself, that shows that he is totally conscious. He's not dazed by being hit by the puck. The cut is the only problem. And that's good news for Koop and the New York Islanders. 3.08 remaining in the second period. And the New York Islanders still have 50 seconds on their power play. Now behind the net and the Islanders. And I was wrong on the last call. We do get penalties on the last play. It just has to follow through. Reichel goes off for the Kings. Derek King and the Islanders goes off. Two minutes each for roughing. So we see a familiar situation. Less than full strength. Both teams will be skating four on four. Kings will meet Winnipeg at the end of this road trip. They're winning tonight at Florida, three to one. Chicago in the Chicago Stadium, they're leading St. Louis 3-0. Edmonton is at San Jose tonight. The Sharks haven't won in nine games this year. Eight losses and a tie. And Edmonton is winless in their last eight. The Toronto Maple Leafs, in case you didn't see it over the weekend, set the NHL record, start of a season with nine consecutive wins. Out of center ice, Kings with it. Sean McEachern, he's had the Kings' best chances in this game. Two chances at Hextall, as you saw, and a hard check in the right wing corner there. But the Islanders come back to center ice. Mark Hardy threw the check on Pilon. Here's home with a nice move to Malikoff. Taking on the helmets, got the sad eyes tonight. Looking at that, the blue line of the New York Islanders. You have a chance immediately to try to rectify the situation. That's what the Kings will do tomorrow night at Detroit against the Red Wings, a team they defeated 10 to 3 in Los Angeles this year. That'll be on at 4.30 on prime ticket tomorrow night. Here's Kelly Rudy sending it around to Tomlinson. Can't clear. Dalgarno holds it in, but now the Kings intercept and Dave Tomlinson comes to center ice. 120 to go in the third period. And the Islanders get the shutout offside called here. Hextall had no shutouts last year, but he had three shutouts the year before with Philadelphia in 1991-92. That was a career high, three shutouts in that year for Hextall. Three in that year, and then he had one with Philadelphia in 1986-87. And those are his total of four career shutouts. Here's Pilon, look out, he's gonna get into a scrap here with uh, Potvan. Pilon and Potvan. And Pilon trying to get some lefts there. A minute 10 to go in this game. They went right at it earlier in this game. They had a couple of chances in this period to go at it, but nothing developed. 110 remaining, and both players, as soon as the puck was dropped, they decided to go at it. Potvan getting some rights in there, and Pilon hanging on. Another right by Potvan. And they're going to break him up. So Mark Potvin 
comes out the winner in that scrap. Elon going to go to the dressing room. So is Mark Potvin. One ten to go here in the third period, and there is Richard Pilon going off right now. With a lot of cuts, bruises. His hand is sore, but the Islanders have struggled this year, and I'm sure he'll feel a lot better with the way they're going to win this game tonight. Rich Pilon has stepped up for his team. So did Mark Potvin. The Kings did not go down easy. It was a quick start by the New York Islanders in the first period. Four straight goals. And they've kept it up here. You could tell that the Islanders are really feeling the shutout. They're working extra hard to keep the puck deep in the Kings' zone. Coming up on our prime ticket telecast tomorrow night.